Very good morning. It's Penny the Black Pen. Something very crazy happened yesterday while uh, I was driving from Nelspreet and Bombela in Pumalanga. Uh, <laughs> the car we were in got hit by lightning and the aerial was completely taken off, the antenna at the top of the car. It's something apparently that almost never happens. And for people that understand electricity and understand lightning and how, it con and how it's conducted, the fact that a car has rubber tires means that lightning should never hit a car. But for some reason it did. Uh, it was slightly scary, extremely loud. Um, and I think we're just glad that uh, none of us got uh, hurt in the car. Um, when you do research on the internet, you realize that these things almost never happen. So I don't know if it's like a sign from the universe that Ubuntu is meant to get like super Thor powers. Um, or if it's just, you know, if it's just a coincidence and random. Um, but I know for me, normally when things like this happen, I use it for self-introspection. Just to figure out what's happening in my life, what's happening in the world. Um, just to gain perspective and to be thankful. You know, as much as it was a mission yesterday, because uh, the car got stuck close to Belfast. I had to get insurance to tow the car. Then we had to get taxis from Middleburg uh, Mall to the taxi rank. From the Middleburg taxi rank because it was late to Emalacheni, Woodbank. And then from Woodbank to um, Johannesburg. You know, that was a bit of a schlep. Got home late last night, tired, emotional, frustrated, but just grateful for life. You know, and grateful to have had at least my phone, a seven zayo, with data, with the battery that's on, um, and getting home safe, man. So please take care of yourselves on the road. Please don't drive late at night. Please don't drive too early in the morning. Please don't speed. You know, and if the weather is bad, please take caution. The weather was not bad when we were driving. You know, we lived in Bombela and it was quite sunny. Such a small piece of, uh, of rain that we went through when the lightning struck. Uh, I was busy wondering if it wasn't some people from Limpopo <laughs> that hate me. Or maybe um, some people in Klampapa Kulman in Zango. I was shopping in the I was like, I'm to say, Papa. Um, but I'm just grateful. It was an interesting experience. And like I said, I used it to self-introspect. I'd like to wish everyone a restful Sunday. I hope you guys will get sufficient rest. Those that run businesses, those that have side hustles, I hope you'll have a good day to be working today. And I hope and I hope you'll make good money. For everyone else, tomorrow we get back to work. And I hope you'll be refreshed and you'll be ready to add value, to work hard, to make sure that we're building this nation, to make money for yourself, for your family so that you can live a much better life. Very excited about a project that I'm embarking on. It's a project that I started and then I kind of stopped and now I'm starting again to build my own online country, the Penwell Kingdom, where I will be king, where I will be dictator. Do not believe in democracy. I think democracy is actually holding us back from moving forward in a swift way. So I'm currently squatting or we're currently squatting on WhatsApp. I've created a WhatsApp group. Some people have joined. I've created a Telegram group as well. Both of them are called the Penwell Kingdom. And we're going to be squatting on Facebook as well, where I'm going to create a Facebook group for the Penwell Kingdom. And then I'm going to be seeing within the kingdom, the people that will be joining there, if we can create or when we can create our own website, so we can have our own online home, and then create our own app for the Penwell Kingdom so that people can get updated, so that we can build a database. And the plan for that is literally for me to have my own space where I don't have to listen to the ANC where I don't have to listen to white monopoly capital, where I don't have to listen to the West or to the East or to Europe, and where I can try and run things the way that I deem best. Um, within that space and within all the people that are going to be joining, I'm looking forward to us uh, unearthing value. I'm looking forward to boasting that my online country has got 0% unemployment. I'm looking forward to boasting that my country makes a lot of money, that it's got intelligent people that run businesses that change the world. I'm highly inspired, of course, by the Jewish nation. I'm highly inspired by the Indian Muslim nation in South Africa. I'm highly inspired by white Afrikaners in South Africa. And I think there's a lot to learn from them. And I hope to borrow some of those learnings to implement in my online country. And sooner rather than later, once we start collecting tax, or once I start collecting tax, or money, or sponsorships, or donations, I'm going to be using that money to then start buying real real estate so that we can start having our own communities and not just in South Africa, but all across the world. We can start with buying small houses, small plots of land, and ensuring that uh, citizens of my country, my online country, are living there, are based there. And we can start building great things.
and investing in very important companies that exist in the world around us so we can have some type of control. It's a social experiment, as I always conduct social experiments, but I think it's something that will give me um, great joy. Of course, my online country is going to be run by my religion. Just like the Middle East is run on Islam, it's going to be run by penalism and penalism principles. And like I said, because it's not democratic, I am king and I am dictator. Um, and anyone who doesn't um, agree with my views is going to be free to leave. Um, and look, at the same time, I believe in benevolent dictatorship, you know, where I do listen to the citizens, I do listen to good ideas. And hopefully sooner rather than later, I can build my own leadership team, my own cabinet ministers who can ensure that we're doing good work on the ground, collecting tax or tithes from the members and being held accountable. One thing that um, a lot of governments are struggling with is transparency and accountability. Uh, NewSouthAfrica.org is a great platform using blockchain technology to create a transparent, accountably held uh, government. I'm hoping to borrow from the learnings from NewSouthAfrica.org as well. And then hopefully sooner rather than later, we'll have our own currency, something like the Aura from Orania, but probably more digital because we're online. Um, we're going to speak in my country about gender and a potential uh, genderless future. Um, we're going to speak about capacitating the men who have been left behind. We're going to speak about um, getting the women to be strong, to get weapons, to know how to fight and defend themselves. We're going to speak about removing ageism so that talented kids don't have to wait till they're 18 or 21 or 25 to get involved. Um, we're going to look into a whole lot of things, the diets that we eat, healthy living. We're going to look into money, creating value, extracting value. Um, infiltrating mainstream media, social media, um, ensuring that we're manufacturing our own weapons or at least invested in businesses that manufacture weapons as well and creating allies, you know, in the real world, allies that uh, run big social media, allies that run big mainstream media that are involved in weapons and armies, uh, allies across the world that have infiltrated governments, the United Nations, the World Economic Forum, G7, uh, bricks, etc., etc. You know, it's going to be an exciting journey for me, and I look forward to as many of you as possible joining me on this journey. For now, uh, you can obviously follow me on my social media platforms um, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. Um, I've got a Telegram channel now, and then obviously for people that want to join um, my online country and uh, my online country as citizens, uh, like I said, we're currently squatting on WhatsApp and Telegram. I'm going to uh, Post the links in the description below and then we can join and, and create from there. Very interesting uh, news came out yesterday with um, ex-president Jacob Zuma basically almost insinuating that the current president, Cyril Ramaphosa, um, has committed treason, you know, in doing business while being president of the country. Because Cyril Ramaphosa has said that he's still selling Angole cattle and he was seen at an auction basically saying his main job is being the president of the Angole society and it's a side hustle to be president of South Africa. Look, it was a joke, but obviously some people took it like as an indication that money and business comes first to him before the needs of the people. Um, along with the Palapala uh, scandal, where uh, there was a lot of foreign currency found, uh, President Jacob Zuma has also said that there are foreign commercial interests that have tried to bury him. Um, he said that the courts have been captured, in particular Chief Justice Raymond Zondo, which is what led to his arrest. Uh, being held in contempt of court and not showing up, even though he'd sent letters to say the reasons why he didn't feel that it was going to be fair for him to be there. His term has come to an end, by the way, his prison term. So he's a free man now, apparently he's quite happy. Um, and now he's fighting again. As much as he's an old man, you know, he still has that fire in him and he's fighting all these cases that have been uh, thrown at him to see how that, that holds. Another very interesting video that came out yesterday was Utabo Mbegi speak about the ANC in Newcastle. Newcastle in KZN, where I come from. I grew up, I was born and I grew up in Newcastle. And saying that one of the reasons he couldn't campaign for the ANC at some point was because municipalities like Newcastle had Izinkabi, hitmen, on their payroll. And they were basically sending people out to kill the competition for certain seats in municipalities and certain, certain councils, etc. And I can only imagine, because I know in KZN in particular, there are a lot of political killings. And I know the National Prosecuting Authority, I believe the NPA, is currently investigating. It may be over 500 political killings in this country. It's not just in KZN, though. It's around the whole country where people are constantly fighting over positions 
over titles, over tenders. You know, it's, it's quite sad, but it's the country we live in. And it's not just in politics. It happens in business as well. And it's not just amongst black people. It's amongst Indian people. It's amongst colored people. It's, among, it's amongst uh, white people as well. Sometimes some of these other races that are not black, they hire black hitmen to kill certain black people so that it looks like black on black violence. But you might find that it's not. But that's the, the world we live in. Business is not a friendly match. Business is war. Politics is not a friendly match. Politics is war. And those that feel that it's, no, you're meant to use merit, you're meant to argue, you're meant to... Look at how this country was built. It wasn't built off the British and Europeans coming here negotiating with the locals. It was built with war and murder and exploitation and something like slavery. If you look at how America became great, it got great through slavery, through forced exploited labor, and then they built systems after that. Look at Europe, which has had endless, endless conflict. Russia and Ukraine is, is nothing new in Europe. If you look at how China became a great nation, within, country, uh, within China internally, and even with other countries as well, they've been fighting. They've been killing people. If you look at the, the split between North and South Korea, it's because of war, not because of a great handle of the English language or because you can debate well or because you've got a good superior model um, or because you're articulate uh, or because of merit, meritocracy in Singapore. Even Singapore had a dictatorship. Robert Mugabe and ZANU PF. You can be as smart as you want. You can be as competent and capable as you want. But at the end of the day, this is not a friendly match. It's war. And once people cannot beat you in the courts legally, once people can't beat you through the money system, once people can't beat you by slandering you and cancelling you, um, killing your credibility using mainstream and social media, the next thing then is to use violence. That's the real world that we live in. And the sooner you guys understand that, the sooner you'll understand how the real world works. I'm excited about what I'm creating. I'd like to give a shout out to some of the businesses that I work with. I want to send a shout out to Siabule Langanga, a great business associate of mine, Lungi Saichele, who's in construction and mining services. I'd like to send a shout out to Chris Kapanga, who does cleaning services in Gauteng. I'd like to send a shout out to Squeaky Clean, that does cleaning in Durban, Cape Town, Pretoria, Johannesburg. I'd like to send a shout out to Kushinda, caterers, mostly focused on TV and film in Gauteng. Uh, I'd like to send a shout out to DJ Spoo and More Fire and Massive Metro. Uh, who else? So many, so many people. Lisi Modise at Buntu Foods. Kulufelo uh, Maponya, 2U Foods as well. Um, Rob Hersoff, of course, Invest Africa. And the Lion Cage, where they basically like a shark tank, like a dragon's den. They get businesses to pitch, you know, and then the best businesses get funded, etc. Um, and everyone else that I know, I know I'm forgetting a lot of people. Everyone else that I know that runs a business, everyone else I know that is pushing and hustling, that is creating jobs, that is paying tax, that is ensuring that we have a better nation. Sfiso Madondo and his construction, Ichombela group. Uh, I'd like to send a shout out to uh, Mandi Samashiko and the work that they're doing with electoral reform. Um, I want to send a shout out to some of my friends that are busy doing tenders, trying to do good work and making sure that tenderpreneurs don't only get a, a, a bad uh, view and that they do a good job and this country is being serviced. Shout out to some of the politicians doing good work where they can. Herman Mashaba, Gaten McKenzie, uh, Chris Papas in KZN, uh, Musi Maimani coming back into politics more aggressively, um, and everyone else doing amazing work. We're proud of you guys. To the podcasters, you know, Podcast and Chill, Mac G and Sol, um, Unpopular Opinion, Tsigi Mazwai, Nkululego uh, on Culture, with Nkululego on Keo, um, Ria and Black Steph, everything music in South Africa, or everything SA music. Um, I'm forgetting a lot of people. I'm proud of all of you guys that are working, man. There are great people in this country and we need to capacitate them. Um, we need to help them. The Black Business Council, also Andile Zungu and them and the work that they're doing. <clears throat> the work that Andile Mngitama is doing with BLF. Um, uh, Busa, for example, Afri Forum. Um, the work that is being done by 360 and Kandani Msibi. You know, creating jobs, investing in, in young black entrepreneurs. Very, need, very needed. Business Partners, which is under Johan Rupert's Remcro, which funds businesses. Uh, the People's Fund, Luanda Chafta, Silibo Homolife, Mzuzugile Sony, Brown Sense, of course, which is an amazing platform on Facebook. Um, the Hookup Dinner, 
Bayulebu, uh, Dr. Life Squad, um, Cheese, a lot of South Africans doing amazing work. Um, Abed Nigo Dao, uh, you know, who's been creating uh, great apps, who's been doing amazing work, uh, certified uh, chartered accountant. Um, Aubakwe, Upax, you know, who's doing amazing work uh, in the Northern Cape, uh, farming there as well. Um, I'm really proud of you guys, man. I'm proud of everyone who's working. I'm, to, I'm, I'm proud of everyone who's building. I'm proud of everyone from my hometown in Newcastle who's hustling in various ways, who's building there. The Jamaluddin family um, who have been very kind to me <clears throat> and who have mentored me. Um, yeah, man. Shout out to everyone who's pushing, man. Shout out to... Um, ah! Blah, 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 blah. Why am I forgetting names? Shout out to the guys in Ego Ruleni, you know, who are fighting slow motion. You know, shout out to slow motion in Ego Ruleni. They are trying to infiltrate the retail space, trying to reclaim the spaza shop industry. Shout out to all my friends in the taxi industry, especially guys in Durban. People like Oliso, who is a panelist and who's pushing. I'm proud of you. All my, my followers and supporters in Limpopo and Pulukwane, all my supporters in Rustenburg, Mafikeng, all the guys I've met in Cape Town. Uh, shout out to Shwiro. Webster, who's pushing retail in Cape Town, who's doing business in Zimbabwe as well. Uh, shout out to Tutuzane Zuma, you know, in Winston, and the guys who are working in Durban, who are working in Mozambique. Shout out to everyone that I know in the Eastern Cape, especially the rugby guys. Uh, Aya Sanga Pesman, Siabulela, uh, Cholo. Uh, shout out to my mates in Joburg, Lakis Tole, Lakim Bombi, Tumelo Mletsane. Yo, I can, I can scream to the top of my lungs, Nkunzi, Malcolm Mtagani in Newcastle. I know I'm forgetting so many of you, people in Bloemfontein, people in the Northern Cape, people in the Northwest, so many people that I know and love in Pumalanga as well, people like Mbombela, people like Pit Retief, people like False Rist, uh, places like False Rist, you know. I hope you'll have a blessed Sunday, man. I'm going to catch up with you guys soon. The panel show comes out tomorrow. The Virtual Nkuku drops tomorrow. The Hustlers Corner drops tomorrow. DJ Spoo is currently in America with the Major League Twins doing amazing work. Joshua Mapong is traveling the African continent making a change. We're connecting, we're building, we're making a better world. Love you guys very much. Cheers.